dynamic with the intimate partner primary source. The intimate partner primary source is a position held by many people who are ensnared by narcissists. The intimate partner primary source, or the IPPS, is somebody who is the boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, partner, cohab of the narcissist. That individual has a particular dynamic applicable to them. What is it? First of all, this particular appliance is embedded. And this is where you experience the golden period. You may well have been a stranger when you first met the narcissist, thus you were a tertiary source. And you got to know one another better, becoming a non-intimate secondary source. You started dating and there was intimacy. You became an intimate partner secondary source of a shelf variety. The narcissist instinctively recognised, being less raw mid-range, or consciously was aware, being greater or ultra, that you were satisfying the prime aims particularly well, and thus you became a candidate to become the intimate partner primary source. You held the position of candidate intimate partner secondary source, and that's when you really experienced the famed love bombing that occurs. And then, having been brought under control and continuing to supply the aspects of the prime aims in appropriate degrees, the narcissist embedded you, crowned you, promoted you to become the intimate partner primary source. And thereafter, you receive the golden period, whereby all is well. And if you want to understand more about the golden period, listen to the video of the same name. Thereafter, because you're the intimate partner primary source, you end up in the position of being devalued. In the way that the sun always rises in the east and we're all going to die. Yes, even me. The intimate partner primary source will always be devalued. It might be that you first enter the stranger zone. Listen to the video of the same name for more information about that. And then you enter the sustained devaluation. Or you enter into the sustained devaluation immediately after the end of the golden period. Devaluation for an intimate partner primary source is always the worst. This is where you read the real horror stories of psychological torture, physical violence, sexual violence, Starving people, controlling their finances, never leaving, letting them leave the house, belittling them in front of the children, having affairs, so on and so forth. And there are different types of behaviours dependent upon the nature of the relevant narcissist that you're ensnared with that contribute to this sustained devaluation. And the different natures of those sustained devaluations will be addressed. In separate work. But for the purpose of the dynamic with the IPPS, you're embedded in the golden period, you then go into devaluation, possibly starting with a stranger zone, and then you receive the sustained devaluation. The sustained devaluation is punctuated by respite periods. These are little golden periods. It might be a few hours, it could be a few weeks, they vary. And in essence, you then, in this devaluation period of sustained devaluation with respite periods, this is the notorious roller coaster ride that is experienced with the narcissist. On Monday, all is good. On Tuesday, you're treated terribly. On Wednesday, you're treated terribly still. Thursday, things improve. Friday, they go bad again. Up and down, peaks and troughs, highs and lows. And this can continue for a sustained period of time. We then move on to the post-devaluation dynamic. Here, there are various outcomes. The first is disengagement. We get rid of you. And if you want to understand the reasons why that happens, listen to five reasons why we leave you. Alternatively, you escape us. This is much rarer. Oh, of course, driven by my work, incidences of this will increase. But following 
the sustained devaluation period, which includes those respite periods, there will either be disengagement, where the narcissist gets rid of you, or, less usually, there will be escape. And is that where the dynamic ends? No. You may think that's it, but there are actually four other types of dynamic which take place post-devaluation. The first is the nomad dynamic. This is where the narcissist embeds somebody, conducts the narcissistic cycle of golden period, sustained devaluation, and then disengages. The narcissist moves on to somebody else. Once with the new intimate partner primary source, there might be the occasional hoover of the former intimate partner primary source, and there will be intermittent seduction of passing interests whilst with this new intimate partner primary source when they enter devaluation, and then the narcissist will disengage from your replacement and seek out a replacement for the replacement. The nomad dynamic is where the narcissist will triangulate the new appliance that he has and that triangulation will be with both the immediate former IPPS and other appliances within the fuel matrix. But he will only ever skirmish with those old and other appliances whilst with the new. The narcissist asserts control over the former IPPS and other appliances in the fuel matrix and naturally obtains them from fuel, character traits and residual benefits. And he uses them to triangulate with the current intimate partner primary source who is in devaluation. But, and here is the big factor with the nomad dynamic, the narcissist will never go back into a formal relationship with the former IPPS, either an immediate former IPPS or ones further back in the history. He might spend a couple of days with the former IPPS. He might hoover them for half an hour. He might spend a night with the former IPPS. But he will never commence the formal relationship with the former IPPS. They will always be former. The narcissist drinks of the hoover fuel, which is excellent fuel, and will take it. But the narcissist has no desire to instigate a long golden period through hoovering. And instead, the narcissist attaches the appliance once again, charms for a night, a few days, maybe even a week. And then he goes back to the current intimate partner primary source. You are the former IPPS and you will always remain the former IPPS for that particular narcissist. It might be that the nomad dynamic involves the narcissist coming back to the former IPPS many, many years later with other intervening former IPPSs between that person and the narcissist. The pattern remains the same. There will be no formal relationship with the former IPPS. This has happened once and will not happen again. But the narcissist will not let that former IPPS alone. It doesn't mean that you'll be hoovered incessantly. It just means that the narcissist will, in conjunction with the hoover trigger and the hoover execution criteria, see an opportunity to obtain control over you as the former IPPS and obtain fuel from you possibly character traits and residual benefits too. The narcissist will deal with the other former IPPSs in a similar way, utilising them in a similar way, spending a night with them, maybe a few days, but there's no formal relationship. And they are in effect just passing fancies to distract him from the new IPPS who is in devaluation. And this dynamic between the narcissist and the IPPS is one where the nomad goes on. He disengages, has a new IPPS, devalues the new IPPS, 
and then can hoover the former but never starts up the new relationship uh, the formal relationship with the former ipps again he then disengages from the replacement and finds a new ipps and he might hoover both the immediate past former ipps and the one before that but he will not enter into a formal relationship with either of those individuals again in effect he moves on with a new ipps every single time only hoovering for temporary reasons the former IPPSs. There is never a reinstatement of the formal relationship with the former IPPSs. With the nomad dynamic, this narcissist always looks to find somebody different, never returns to the old for the formal relationship, and seeks fresh territory. He seeks out a completely new appliance. He will triangulate this new and different appliance with the recently disengaged one, and he may even do so with the one before that. But the older appliance will never be allowed to form a formal relationship with the narcissist again. The nomad narcissist, where the nomad dynamic is being applied, is always moving forward, seeking out old new victims occasionally hoovering old ones, but never to the extent of resurrecting an ongoing formal relationship with them. Another dynamic is that of the ping-pong player. This type of narcissist will secure his new intimate partner primary source and he will triangulate her with the former IPPS. He will then hoover the former IPPS and then go back to her and reinstate their relationship. He will then triangulate. He will then triangulate her with the recently disengaged from appliance, who was the new appliance. He will then vacillate back and forth, back and forth between these two appliances, leaving one for the other, a lengthy and ongoing tug of love, as the narcissist bounces back and forth between current IPPS former IPPS, who becomes current IPPS, meaning the current IPS then becomes the former IPPS. He's like a ping-pong ball between the two same people. He may have interaction, or she may have interaction, with other appliances on an intimate level, but they'll just be one-night stands and brief liaisons. He is, in the long term, only interested in moving between these two individuals. He will have former IPPS, current IPPS, and then they will swap roles. He has these two primary sources at different times who he goes back and forth between for as long as he can do so. If one of the individuals in this arrangement decides against continuing with it, then they escape. And the narcissist will try and hoover them back in by the initial grand hoover, but this fails. The narcissist will then organise a replacement and draw them into this ping-pong setup. The newly escaped former appliance may well be hoovered to maintain the ping-pong setup, but if this fails, a new person is drawn into, the inter drawn into the arrangement. So, the dynamic was person one and person two. Person one, current IPPS, disengaged from, becomes former. Person two, new current IPPS, then disengaged from, he goes back to one, then back to two, back to one, back to two, goes back to one, she escapes. He goes back to two, and then he draws in three, and he moves in back and forth between three and two, and three and two. He might intermittently hoover one, but will not be able to reinstate the formal relationship with her on the basis that she has got out and stayed out, or he has got out and stayed out. The narcissist will only move between two primary sources and is different completely from the nomad. The third dynamic is that of the anchor. This primary source is long-suffering. The narcissist will have a long-standing intimate partner primary source, invariably married to them, and there is often children involved. The narcissist will, during the sustained devaluation period, seek out fresh appliances and conduct affairs, possibly 
leaving the long-standing appliance and striking out anew with the replacement. But, after a period of time, the narcissist returns to that long-standing appliance, often citing missing the children or doing it for the children, or they realise just how much their spouse truly loves them and they love her or him. The recently acquired IPPS will then be cast aside for some time. The narcissist may, of course, hoover that disengaged former IPPS at a future point, but only for the purpose of one-night stands and infrequent liaisons. He has no interest in resurrecting the relationship again. Instead, what he does is he seeks out a new IPPS afresh. And therefore, again, he disengages from long-standing anchor IPPS as he pursues his dream of potent fuel forever with the new IPPS, who is a completely different person. Then that will end and the narcissist will push her to one side and return to the long-suffering anchor. Then he will disengage from her and go off with somebody else, a third person, a new person, and then he will leave her. And he will have these affairs in effect, leaving home before returning at a future point. It is often an individual who is regarded as the anchor, the one who remains in situ and never changes, who is codependent, to a considerable degree, and is unable to want anyone other than the narcissist, no matter how badly that narcissist has treated them, and no matter, no matter how many times that narcissist has left and come back, and no matter how many affairs he or she has had. The final variance of the dynamic is one that operates in a hybrid manner. This narcissist may operate as an anchor before every time changing to the nomad, and then perhaps back to the anchor or a ping-pong arrangement. That narcissist morphs and shifts between these three different approaches, often as a consequence of a disruption to the primary source of fuel, whereby, for instance, the long-suffering anchor finally moves on, or, more usually, there's an intervention for them and they're helped away from the narcissist. Or it might be that both primary sources in the ping-pong arrangement escape, reject the narcissist, and he or she is forced to adopt a nomadic approach. There are a variety of reasons why these arrangements are adopted, dependent on the type of victim, the school of narcissist, and other factors. For now, however, this is the dynamic with the intimate partner primary source. You are embedded in the golden period, you will suffer devaluation. There might be a stranger's own section to it, but either way, you'll enter sustained devaluation with respite periods. Post-devaluation, there may be disengagement, there may be escape, and there may be the four variations of nomad, ping-pong, anchor, or hybrid. If you are uncertain as to which you belong and you want further guidance, please do not hesitate to enlist my expertise and organise a consultation with me. But this gives you an understanding of the fate, if you will, of the IPPS in the dynamic with the narcissist. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.